didn't. You have zero proof. There was no video. Evidence. I had a. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Train Podcast. I'm here with my three-time co-author, King of the Pennsylvania Press co-author of the year, World Earl class. Kunkel, who's he's he's really in a mood right now because I've just beat oh him goodness. in broad jumps and I beat his vertical jump downstairs by seven inches and he's One, really triggered. I did not and test upset right the vertical now. jump. Do you jump? Did you not jump on the vertical jump, Matt? I did, but I didn't test it. Like I didn't put an effort. I just like went up. Oh yeah, and yeah. Just did know, it. That's what. Like, oh. Yeah, no, no effort. Now the broad jump where we actually competed and did like multiple jumps. First I, of all, I did two, and you I did beat, like four. I destroyed you. You did not. I destroyed you. I I measured out, and mine was farther than yours. So this and even the three football players said you got oh, me on the first yeah. one, Yo, the and then the Nick. second one I outpaced you. Ty pointed directly to me. Yeah, that was after the first one. So then I went and beat you. So and everyone eyes got have, big. Let's have a let's have a fit at forty comp. Fit at forty. I am going to destroy you too. You know who's this. more athletic and who's more fit. It's going to be me. Okay, so the first test is who no, can run a marathon. No, no, no. We can't decide. The, second the test contest. is. Who the, benches 405? The, the audience has to decide this stuff. We should like put 20, di- like each of us put 10 things in there. And, they, they and then like 10 out of the 20. 10 come out. <laughs> because like, I don't know. Like if we do a CrossFit workout, I will beat you. I can't clean though. That's the only thing. I can- See? If I, we, I haven't cleaned in like 12 years. If we do anything mobility wise, I will beat you. I'm still upset about my my. If we broad jump, I will beat you. I want to go. I can beat you probably in the back squat right now too, or at least keep up with you right now. I want toe to toe broad jump. I will smoke you. All right. Well, we'll see. But right now, I am the winner. See, Earl's upset. I'm not upset, but okay. I am the winner right now, and I think I have room to like grow. No. Yeah. You've got no bunnies. I get out of here. I got room to grow. It is funny watching old people like us jump. Yeah. Well, I don't... Dude, I was reasonably close to those young kids. I mean, we, you were tying with Earl. Yeah, no, other he, Earl. Is, he is 280. Yeah, but it wasn't like they were smoking me by, like, two feet. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's fair. Like, I was within 12 inches of that. And I got, like, two decades of tread on my tires, too. <laughs> like, no offense. Like, I... I all of those guys, great guys. Wish them the best. But still, like, 20-year-old me, like, going to compete, like, out on the field type of thing. Yeah, it doesn't quite work that way. Like, <laughs> like you're silent storm. You're still going for the other person's neck. <laughs> and since we're talking so much about jumping today, the idea around this is to talk around, uh, like, doing two athlete days in a week. Okay. Because are you doing two – not you, but – do you have certain athletes doing two athlete days in a week right now? Uh, I sort of have that right now with the with the pro day group of football guys. It's it's like a Tuesday Friday is almost broken up into Friday is like semi athlete day, semi technique recovery, like technique focus. So like like a Friday, like today was a true athlete day. Friday would be like we go outside and and you know, we warm up and we do athlete type like jumps and stuff, and then we would do uh, three cone and shuttles. So like, it's using them, it's using those plyometrics and jumps to prep them for high speed movements. Okay, that are technically based. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, athlete day twice a week hypothetical then maybe we'll use this as too. like you do have some uh what's the word concrete maybe like in practice how it's being used yeah, yeah, yeah. but let's say it's all athlete day like we're not worried about technique like okay. how well you can do the thing right what day do you get rid of first off and put it in there for with the second one day five hypertrophy day oh wow so you go so you essentially get I four mean, leg days of sorts right so what i was thinking is like in the case of, let's say you have, let's say you have like a, I would go, I honestly, this will sound wild. I would go between a day five and a day one. And the only reason being is like, so you would add a day six to do it. 
I would I would remove I would remove like power day and do it there as a day one. Uh huh. Or I would remove the hypertrophy day. And the reason being, I would say like, I'm, I'm thinking like a 1500 meter runner. If they're training, if they're doing gym work, they're going to do about anywhere from like 80 to a hundred minutes a week. That would be two to three days. And they would probably end up doing like very, very easy squats. And I actually think that they would probably benefit from like, some squatting with jumps with jump base work. And then they would still have, they would still have like an impulse day in there, which would be like when they would do their, their traditional gym, like squat stuff. All right. I'm going to like totally sidetrack us real quick. Okay. We're going to react to a video right now because yeah. your boy just like did something pretty Based substantial. Of, yeah. Um, and we just have to do this. So, um, if y'all didn't know, Nick Singleton trained here at Garage Strength from like the time he was a young lad until yeah. he got every offer in the world and decided I'll go play here. I mean, he did come in after the bowl game this year. Oh, and he has came in after the bowl game. Yeah, I guess trained for what ten days or the yeah. Field. And his big goal when he went to Penn State, his big goal was he wanted to get the vert record, he wanted to get the shuttle record, the forty record, the squat record, and the clean record. I forget about bench press. I forget if he really wanted to get that or not. But this lift here, so he has this the squat or he has the forty. I've got to check. I think he might have the shuttle. He does not have the clean record, and then he does. This is the school record for the squat. So for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna ruin it. Spoilers ahead. Yeah, this is a five rep. I guess it's a max back squat. It yeah, it's like a five rep test essentially. Yeah. Um, how much weight did he have on the bar here? 570. 570, 570 pounds for five. And we're, these are, the depth is pretty impressive too. Um, and he does this and I'm just putting this out there for, um, can I say it? Should I say it? Or am I going to get my hand slapped for saying it about like what it takes to be elite? No, no, I think it's fine. I mean, like if, if you really think that you want to become like a power five, running back yeah d1 athlete like who's good hey this is what who's a d successful this is what a d1 athlete does yeah in the weight room right when they test right all right like it's not too heavy when you're asked to squat this much or clean that much and so if i you know echoing what you just said it's like if you're going to want to get to that to that level you should just start now yeah you know like all right let's watch yeah. this okay Play. All right. You gotta click on if you want the sound. You oh, can. it's a high bar. We don't need sound. We're the audio. Okay. This way we won't talk over one. Dude, I hadn't seen this angle actually. Yeah. Two. Two. Wait, what kind of shoes does he have on there? Um, I can't. They're all black and gray. I don't even know if they're lifters. He's huffing and puffing, but that's the first one where he got a little forward. It looked like as soon as he so. Like there he he's that's like classic Nick where it's like as <laughs> yo, everybody's like Whoa. The fifth one was a grind, but it was like a it was like still riding a Porsche, like grinding through. It was still pretty fast. There was nothing about it where I was like, that was slow. Man. And like the the crazy part, I actually think those might have been lifters he was wearing, but I, I, I couldn't really tell. Yeah. The depth he's hitting on those is like unquestionable, and like to be fair, like I've never seen him, play him again. not squat as deep as he can go. Um, also, you know that fourth rep was tough. See, I think this might actually be lifters on, but I can't tell. I'm trying to compare the shoe to the shoes that the guys have in the background. You know that fourth rep was tough, but then you can see him like sort of say like, I'm going to get this. That yeah. was the one thing with him is like, dude, he would not take reps that like he, he like he would oh, take, he, he vocalizes. Yeah. Like he too. always would know when he would be able to get something. So 570 pounds for five division one running do you back. Think that would be like a 650 back squat. I don't know. I, at least I've never been someone who my reps transfer very well to Dude, the crazy a one thing rep. with him is that he would transfer it higher. Like yeah. the more you would drop down, 
the higher his his lift would be relative because he's so twitchy. So like a, a five rep or let's say a five rep. So his me, five rep is like eighty five percent versus yeah, like a five reps ninety percent right, for you. Yeah, yeah, yes, totally, exactly like that. Yeah, but a, a probably a little bit. I would say for him that might be like eighty three. So if you say, all right, if you said that was eighty three, that's another seventeen percent. Five seventy is what fifty seven pounds is ten percent. Another half of that is twenty three and a half. So there's at least what eighty more pounds on his lift. So that's I mean that that's where I and was if you add that other two percent, <laughs> I was singing between six forty and three hundred kilos. Yeah, yeah, that's three hundred kilo squat probably for he turns. He just turned twenty. Oh wow! He just turned twenty in February. It's pretty strong. That's pretty crazy. And how do I say it? You realize that he's only a sophomore in college. Yeah. Like, this is only his, his second year of college. <laughs> what? Now, you've done a lot of athlete days with him, too. Yes. Right? Actually, we have one from this summer where he jumped, and he was just doing absolutely insane stuff. And I think that the one thing you've got to remember with athlete work is, like, it's so high speed and the force is so absurdly high. Like there's so much load. Is like, that why my wrists were hurting when I was landing jumping, on the broad yeah. jumps? Yeah. It was so weird. It's it's the speed of everything and the recruitment, it is very, very high. So the more consistent that you can get with an athlete doing that, typically one, they're gonna run faster because they're gonna be more on that that impulse uh spectrum of training. But two, they will learn how to recruit really well. Nice. So when they recruit well, um, let's think like through the lens of the 5S protocol, right? Like yep. the the stop, the stutter. What else is there? Sports specificity type of thing in Speed. there. Speed. Am I missing one? Or do we name them all? Slow. Slow. Sometimes uh, I know how they're like used to like teach. Like the slow will almost teach you how to decelerate and balance, right? Yep. And coordinate through. And the through. stop and the stop with that but like the stutter will also teach you how to like almost there's a deceleration pattern to it and then but accelerate. it keeps the ref, yeah. the elasticity within it yeah that's like the connection where like the speed one is sometimes like you have to learn how to abs- take all that force and there then put it out yeah let's call the let's let's say the stutter is the keystone the keystone oh that's a very pennsylvania reference it's like the key the keystone s and then like the the speed and the specialty or specificity are really where like that's like the flashy stuff but the work was done on the first three yeah so like um you talk about specificity i always think about the one clip the one of nick when he does the mini hurdle hop two lands on one side mini hurdle two like and does that down like for a jump cut practice? Yeah, yep. and uh, doing that that single leg landing right like it's that's tough. Yeah, and just to then too like watching the guys now when they do the reckless jumps. Yeah, with like they're essentially doing like a mini hurdle hop, double bilateral, and they have to do a one eighty yeah. land and broad jump. Yeah, and it's just like it's impressive to watch, and I'm thinking about that stuff through like specificity right the reckless into the broad jump when i talked to you about it you said it's we're training the broad jump like the broad jumps the point yeah just trying to put more neural noise on them instead of just like hey let's just do a broad jump let's just do this so right so their bodies can start learning how to recruit my mind started going to what about the person who's better at sort of the neural noise prior to the big move and they don't necessarily test that stuff, right? Like so. But if I'm in an open field sport, so you can see this. There's a wide receiver this past weekend in the combine from Florida State. Okay. Okay. Dude ran like, like, I want to say he ran like a four six three, and he's like six two six three. Ran slow. Everybody was like, "What is going on?" Ran slow, in the forty. But. Now they have GPS tracking on them. They've got like the sports bras essentially when they're when they're doing their field drills. So now you can see here's his 40, here's his 10, here's his shuttle, here's his vert, all that stuff. And he he was very, very, very average, like super average. 
but for an NFL player. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now they have they have pretty good research that essentially says like if you want to be like a top ten wide receiver, you've got to run like a four five or a four four five to a four four eight is where the the sweet spot of like a Jamar Chase was. You know, yeah, there's guys below, but a lot of those guys that run like four two, four two three or four threes, a lot of those guys actually end up being the guys that get hurt quite a bit. This dude from Florida State. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't run a four three or anything like that. Right, right. But there's 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 just things multiple to be aware factors of. start coming into play. Yeah. So to to your case in point here, or to your case that you're presenting, this dude ran slow. And then when they were comparing some of his GPS scores, he was running up to five miles per hour faster than some of the guys, which is insane. So for some reason, when he was actually running his drills, he was coming out of his cuts cleaner. So, and, and this, you know, when DeAndre Hopkins was at like the, you know, he's still a dog, but when he was at the peak of his career, uh-huh. his route running was, he was notorious for being an ungodly precise route runner. And that's like almost what you think about with this dude from Florida State is like, will it hurt him that he ran a 4 6? Like maybe it'll hurt him a little bit, but because of that, with the There's tracking. These- with talk about how technology helps like exactly sorta, yeah exactly on the field the eye test like yeah. game speed as they would say yeah. like oh, i'm faster on the field than i am on a 40 like and now you can prove it out like yeah, yeah it's actually real this dude is actually running quicker now i don't know if they were comparing him to other guys at his level you know I, i'd have to go back and watch the clip but it's like it's an interesting concept to think about because in a in an open skilled sport that's going to be much more advantageous. Whereas in a closed skilled sport, it it it's not going to be as advantageous because you're literally yeah, you're gonna... tested on like your physical specimen. Whereas an open skilled sport, it's more about like are you a gamer and can you turn it on? Yeah, uh, and and clearly, I think that's that's I, I actually think about with Nick what. You know, if you watch highlights, especially like his freshman year when they played Auburn, you know, that was his first big time game, SEC in all in Alabama at Auburn. Um Is Charles Barkley there? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if he was, he saw Nick run all over them. There was a couple plays where it's like he he would like set guys up with that slow, slow, slow boom. And it's almost like that's one aspect of the five S's that I think that people might not realize is that you can even learn if you learn to do things with a stop and you learn to do things slowly and then you learn how to stutter step with them then you can learn how to kick it into high gear with speed and, and specificity I have two things i want to talk about one and that takes his 570 back squat yeah into that, you know one completely unrelated but thematically related um you may have listened i listened to this band i've seen them live you may have listened to them they're called earth yeah, and they do like this real slow, methodical, like a glacier pace type of metal. Yeah. And to me, it's very advanced type of music and incredibly hard to play because mm-hmm. you need to be able to go slow. Yeah, and not like just rush through things. So to like slow as something is bad is not necessarily the case. Right. And then I think from a larger gaming and athletic elite standpoint i would reference someone like a athlete like luka Doncic, right yeah who uses tempo almost yeah. exclusively to blow by people that are quote unquote better athletes than them right or to set them up to be like i'll just slow down and you keep going and it's yeah, almost and like yeah yeah exactly. that car chase scene where someone puts on the brakes and it's and like fly by yeah, yeah. so um or like top gun the original top gun when they oh, like, i'll pull up and i'll fly right by <laughs> yeah and like stuff like that too and how through plyometrics or a bonus athlete day, you can work these skill sets yeah. into your training, like and how you do it and use it. So, all right. Typically, when I think of an athlete day, like lower upper athlete day, here it comes. It's right in between the Lulu. Right. I'm doing like something to wake up the neural system, probably like a PVC pipe walk, or you're a dummy like me and you'd rather do like an absolute strength movement, like front squats uh, or single leg okay, squats. Though. Yeah. And then I'm going into like bilateral, unilateral, simple type of jump. Yep. And then maybe I'm doing that again. More complex. More complex. Jump series. Yeah. Somewhere there. And Pretty then sure. maybe a reflexive strength movement or two. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. Do I do the same thing on the second day? 
so the one thing I was going to say is that on Fridays with Ty and Cam or all is like we do, we will do power snatches before they start. All right. So you do a technical coordination movement to, as like the neural wake up. Yeah. Do yeah. you do a specific variation to make it lighter or heavier? Two or? bucks power snatch. Okay. So and it's just like rip it as fast as you can. And the one thing that we did too is it's like, okay, the first three weeks when, when Ty was here, it was like, all right, let's look at what's his what's his vertical on an everyday base. Every single day we were testing his vertical still. And it's like, all right, when he's at this level, he doesn't perform that well. Then we would test after some some snatches, right? And we would always see, okay, he can get back to like 32 to 33 inches after a couple sets of snatch. So if we know that, the quality of his execution in the session will be better if it's following snatches. So I have a question around that. If you know this, like if you can create this data around like a, a profile around an athlete, yeah. like, hey, if I prime them, like I potentiate them through snatches, they're actually more explosive than like I in an acute setting, I can go make them more explosive. Right, right. Would it be beneficial, say, complete hypothetical, I'm a shot putter. And yes. I know I can be more explosive yeah. if I snatch before I go throw. Yeah. Would it be, like you have to test it out? Would it benefit me to like be like, yo, part of my warm up now is I'm going to snatch up to 100 kilos or yeah, you, something relative. You've got to test it out and you got to test out the time frame and the proximity. Uh -huh. But I mean, that's what Krauser did. Like they, he, he did it 10 hours before his final this past year. Now, I'll, I'll share this as an example only because I'm very close friends with Aaron Gadsden who just coached his wife, uh, Theo Lafon, to the indoor world title and the triple jump. And I know for a fact at 1030 at night, they, they lifted. And they like, to, they like to lift before they compete within a six-hour window, which is really where most of the research is. It's about a six-hour window. But she had to compete at like 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning. And so what they did is they actually lifted late, tried to get her to bed as quickly as possible so that she had the long recovery time. Uh, she did like super heavy poles. Uh, I want to say she did split squat and, and then maybe it was some type of jump at the end. I forget the third exercise, but it's like something like that. I always recommend because it's, it's really hard to find research on world-class elite level athletes. And in this case, that's who these people are. They they've done the research on themselves and some people will say, well, it's anecdotal. Well, but if they've done the test and they have some type of benchmark that they base their test off of and they've shown it to work in their setting, then they should keep doing it. In the case of like a kid in high school, I, don't, I probably wouldn't play around with it. With a kid in college, maybe you start to play around with it. Post-collegiate or if you have a football team and it's like uh, there's a lot of evidence that basketball players, when they actually do something in the middle of the day, will perform better at night. Because they're they're actually moving, they're getting their heart rate up, they're doing some type of of fitness based going out to start the car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I you know, there's a lot of athletes that could relate to like when you sit around all day and you can you compete later in the day, you feel stale at night when you go to compete. So how could you use a second athlete day in this mindset? And not like overdo it. Yeah, like, I would say like, honestly, I think you could do two or three exercises and you could do two to three sets of each thing. And it could be simple movements that, you know, you do like a pogo jump, you do, you know, step up, a jump, step up, something like that. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you do like, a, I, you know, I love stair jumps, but maybe you did something like that or, or like one hurdle hop. A lot of throwers will feel like if they're like an hour out from a competition and they did like four single hurdle hops or four doubles, something like that, that would be enough to really, really get them rolling. Now, my next question is why simple? Why not complicate it when it's more neurally demanding? I think it could be potentially too fatiguing. Okay. If you're looking for potentiation in my mind, it's, it's, Simpler is better. Better. You're gonna get more awakening from the actual demanding right. movements. Then my, I guess my next step through that is like you talk. We were talking about shot putters, right, or something, or yeah. track and field in general, yeah. closed skilled sport. Yeah. Could the jump series then maybe benefit more the open skilled sport athlete who needs those okay. in and outs movement, a little bit yeah. more? Yeah, I'm thinking about like a Jan jump series maybe could be more beneficial for a linebacker. 
you know, pregame, they do, they, let's say they still do pogo jumps and PVC pipe walks and they do two times through Jan jump series and then they're ready to roll. Yeah. I guess you could work back too from like total jumps. Like, yo, you need this many. And knowing that like each yeah. single leg one yep. is Should. like a half or something yeah. like that. And then I think that would be the way to do it is, is like 20 to 30 total touches. And yeah. They're probably ready to go. And you, so if you want to do something more complicated. And the thing is, a lot of these these big time schools when they're warming up for a game, dude, they're doing a lot of skipping. They're doing a lot of of like almost like single leg bounds to a point, high knees, things like that. They're doing a lot of that already. So in theory, it it should not be degradatory, I guess. Or yeah. Degrading, I guess. It would be the yeah, it wouldn't degradation. Be, yeah, there wouldn't be as much degradation <laughs> as I would maybe think. Uh, but I, I I do think it. You've just got to be aware of it. Yeah. Man, look where we went from a second athlete day to now like doing athlete days before you have a big comp or lifting weights before. I, I do to, th- like potentiate a response a few hours later. The interesting part is that there is if you would go on PubMed and you type in like priming workouts, potentiation workouts, there's some on hockey, there's some on basketball. There there's not a lot on power sports and there's not a lot on elite level power sports. So it's like there is some research on it. There's probably like a, a half a dozen to a dozen papers on it. And the the evidence is a little conflicting. But again, if they're not dealing with world class caliber athletes, like isn't that an issue in and of itself? Like I know hear me out here. You said like, oh, they did this testing on themselves and it's like, oh, but your sample size type of thing, like is their argument per se. I would argue like how many do you think elite athletes exist in the world? To like, you know what yeah, I mean? To, like to make that. Yeah. You, there's, I don't want to say it, this is a world record holder. R- yeah. Right. Or like world standard. Like, yeah, this is, a, this, this is a ritual of training that has gotten them to this point. Yeah. Like, this is their system they grew up in. I would argue that sample size is probably at mo- about 20% yeah. of the world population who can actually do that. Yeah. Right. Like there's five people, probably maybe 10 who could set the world record. So like, what if, do you mean? 20%. It would be one in five people. Like if I did that study on elite athletes, right? Yeah. Like who could set a world record type of thing has that capability. It'd be, there's five people probably like, yeah. and that may be pushing it. There may be three out of already a very small sample. Yeah. Size of so people. if I use one of those people of the five, um, it's a 20% of the world's population of people capable, people capable to see that can happen. Yeah. It's like my more yeah. meta argument towards it. Right. Like they're saying, oh, you need to use every no, not everyone's capable of that. Right. Right. So if I'm looking how to train the most elite, not just like what gets me bigger well, biceps. That, that's it. There is like <laughs> science based. If, if I'm looking to train the most elite, I should be studying the most elite. Yeah. Now that does not mean to be to become elite, you have to train like the elite. What it means is if I want to see how priming impacts the best in the world, then I need to study the best in the world. Does that mean that that specific snapshot of priming will get you to become elite? No, that's a, it's a, because the, the purpose of the tool of priming is not for long-term growth. It's literally for the acute situation. So like that needs to be clear to people listening that like, just because you see someone who is elite doing something, the snapshot doesn't mean shit to you. It means <laughs> nothing. And I think that that's something that I, personally, but but it still may help. Like it helps with if with with like when I out jumped you today, I had no priming. <laughs> like I'm coming off my you rest day. You know, I, I was this, sitting at a computer yo, working. Talk about priming. I ran six and a half miles this morning. So shut up. That's Dude, more you know priming than I had. Yeah, I may beat me in the vert. She did like 29 and a half, something yeah. crazy. Dude, I was like, I've got to get back over 30. I probably took 30 jumps on the vertical jump mat. And then she's over there jumping in those squishy freaking shoes. Just dude. so everyone knows, yeah, I may beat both of us in the broad jump oh too. Oh my God, dude, her jump was crazy. Like, it was insane. Yeah. I was just like, well, I just, she's won a gold medal. I haven't. I, I don't really care. <laughs> she also power cleaned a lifetime PR today at 135. Whoa. Yeah. Toyed it. She's strong. Real strong. Yeah. All right. 
I don't know if we answered my question, but I really enjoyed this conversation. Well, what was the the original question? What do you do with the second athlete day? Like, do you program it the same as the original? Oh, like, I, I think it's slightly different, and you just got to be aware of fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you start out with, like, we did get to, like, snatch first. Like, use a technical coordination yeah. movement. Don't necessarily prime with, like, a PVC pipe walk. Yeah. Um, oh, we do do that, too. Oh, you do that but as then well? We, then we go into the snatch. So, like, use a technical it's like three doubles. So very low on volume. Think about it. Speed is more important. Mm -hmm. Think impulse, not how heavy I can go. Mm -hmm. Smooth and fast. Yeah. Snappy, elastic. All right, we're gonna react to some things now. Um, before we do, uh, there's no link in here for that one. Better hurry up because I got yeah, about I know I got I know. about five and a half minutes before I have to coach. Remember, let me Earl, see I'm which one is this. Coach. This one's good. All right, we're gonna Dude, watch. <laughs> this is that and, chop? Yeah, and everybody's this is D like, Lyman. Of course, Dane picks a six, six two eight. seven eight. So six three NFL two fifty four. He has to be an outside rusher, right? Yeah, he's like an edge. Like I was gonna say, dude. This let's watch this forty. This is stupid. Let's keep in mind, Dwight Freeney ran a. Uh, four four nine or four four seven, and he's probably a. Top this is his three. first go. What was that? Ten? Oh, you got whistled. They were calling, dude. They were whistling a lot of people. What do you get a whistle for? You cheated. If you get set, and you move before like you're fully set. What does that matter? Like, is how does it? A, oh, that's Peyton. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say. I'm trying to think. How does that like? How does that impact the test? I don't know. I mean, it, it could it could trip the the measurement early. Isn't it wild though? It's like a it's like it's like a meat market there. Like you're just everybody's Dude. sitting there. Dude, his first one, one five, five four, four. Yep. Boom. Four four nine. It was really extended. Like yeah, just over crazy crazy. Like, dude, he hammered out. You know, we got to keep moving. Dude, you think he looked up and he's like. Yep, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yo, I ran a four four nine with two fifty five. This one's a okay, lineback. So, yeah, this Bama. is I don't know which one this is. I don't I'm just gonna skip ahead. Okay. What is this? That's a DB. Is that the D B we wanted? No, no. The, the It's tight end. The D B or the 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 record was from Xavier. Actually, you know the, what? I wanna watch this linebacker run it. Okay. Just because I know we did a D1 linebacker video and okay. people were not some people did not agree at least the vocal people did not agree with some of the numbers they thought they were, they were upset a little, that they had to actually train hard yeah and this is you know let's see how fast this guy does it just the first like one four, random four six five four, four six. six all right four six now of course these are guys four years three years going to the nfl yeah. these are the creme de la creme what was our number though four, i think seven, it was five? like four six to four eight why is that bad? Like I don't know. That's what it takes. Yeah, and I I'm not saying this is the fastest. Well, think about it. Like if you can run a four six in high school, and you can gain thirty five pounds and still run a four six, like you're good. Yeah, it's. Not I'm just gonna go to a rant. Oh, let's see this spike. This is definitely someone running it fast. If it's spiked here, let's watch this. Oh, let's stay bold. Dallas Turner. This is another Bama guy. Two forty-seven. All right, just shy of six-three. Damn. So he's he's a big freaking linebacker now. Yeah, he's like the old school backer. He's a lean two forty-seven. Let's see how fast this is. I'm gonna guess four-five-two. Ooh, Ooh. four-four-seven. Four, Man, jeez. Once again, we get it. These are the NFL guys. These are like top draft picks. Comes up right around twenty. Oh, he's all over the place too. He like did a little that's, swaggle that's what's in there. Crazy dude! It's crazy to see. Like we gotta yeah. keep going. We gotta keep looking at more people. Let's see. Where does it spike? Oh, it's not telling me. Who's this? Uh, I did want to see Theo Johnson. He's a Penn State guy that ran really well. Uh, running backs ran really well. Not watching the running backs. I got to get to our boy. Okay, so he'd be on here, the 4-2. No, this is the guy we need. Okay. We, we're going to just watch the, yeah, this the, fine. the world record one. Mr. Or 
combine record. Xavier Worthy. I think he. I think he gets called here too. Oh, they they uh, deleted that. Off goes. Four two two. 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 The unofficial. It ended up being a four two one, one didn't yep, it? Yep. Yep. And he just keeps running. Mm -hmm. Catch me if you can. He's like doing his Leonardo DiCaprio impersonation. <laughs> Cameraman's like, I'm trying to Tom Hanks this. It's not working out for me. It's crazy because it's like. I like how everyone's excited for him. Too. I think that is a, like not to get too corny, but like each group of of athletes, they, they basically each position group, they, they put them together and they like stick together. For yeah, like they're hanging out days. for like. It's cool that they're all like, yo, if you do this. Like they were all yelling at him to take his cleats off after his first his first run. They were like, don't run another one. You're done, dude. Don't run another one. And then he was like, "Nah, I want to break the record." But the that's the cool part. P they, like they're already you got the money, you got the money. Yeah. And he's like, "Nah, I don't care about the money. I want to break the record. I need more. I need more. We got to keep going though, because okay. apparently you have to go uh, do I have stuff today. Four four minutes. Even though we purposely set up your schedule to record today, <laughs> because you don't do what you're going to do today. Today, just putting it out there. Um, hey, I'm actually a coach, Earl. We do have a freak of the week video. Okay. I don't, I don't see it up here. I have to get the Discord open. No, I think it's in the yeah right there. Is that it? I think it's. No, that uh, this is the. I know it was C word. Yeah, I know what the video is. It's just not linked here. Okay. <laughs> um. I can pull it up on my phone, but it doesn't help anyone there. Yeah, give it. me the questions here. All right, let's go to that. Let me get back to something. Let's just have Nick's thing loop in the back while we do this. <laughs> um, overrated, underrated. You ready for this? Yeah. You got to be quick. Um, rest time between plyometric jumps, overrated or underrated? Underrated. I think you should take more than people do. Oh, man. You are such a thrower at heart. <laughs> overrated, underrated. Um Hurdle height when performing hurdle hops. Overrated. Ooh. Yeah, overrated. Only in the sense that, like, it's really usually the most benefit from ground reaction time. So whatever the height's at that you can still hit and go type yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah, rapidly. Not like when... Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I like seeing big hurdle hops. And, like, we were watching Stefan Holmes hurdle hops. Like, now he was fast and he was really high with the height. So, like... I just think it's it's better to have the the quicker reaction, like then instead of having to like ground and like sort of um, almost, almost like, like pause, like the Superman type of like where you see the, or the the drag or the Matrix when you see Neo like push into the, the ground and it like goes yes. out and then they come up type. Yeah, of we thing. would rather not have that. Yeah, it's still a real cool effect. All right, overrated, underrated, unilateral jumps. Underrated. I think they're ridiculously underrated. It's like, dude, the f best way to improve your freaking. Sprints. You know what event I want? Outside of sprinting. I want a unilateral hurdle hop in our competition. I can do it left footed really well. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm more athletic than you. I can do it on my right and left. And I have video to prove it, too. <laughs> you, all, you actually complimented I want my it single for distance. leg. I want it for distance. I can beat you in the broad on two legs, so I think I can get you on one, all right, too. Let's see the comments. All right. All right. This Either or. Athlete day or impulse day. taking a long time with this one i would go with athlete day only because i have the lift in the beginning of the week okay yeah man and you can still develop impulse through yeah. that athlete day too yeah it was i will tell you there there is someone on discord i can't recall the name like off the top of my head wanting to replace the athlete day with an impulse day oh really yeah and i i was i wanted to figure out why do you want to do this like because yeah. i get it like i want to lift more maybe i don't feel strong enough maybe it, i think it could be i that. feel like i'm doing more work on an impulse day when i'm lifting many weights people will be like i like some people will be like if i didn't have that athlete day i feel like i'd die like because of the volume yeah and it's like then some people are like oh the volume's not high enough it's like, it, what it, it is a three-day split Okay. That they were trying to replace, they were talking about okay. replacing it in season too, which it, that makes a little more sense. And I was kind of, but hey, I said, go experiment. All right. Audience questions. Reddit routine kitchen five, four, eight, seven. I like that name. What did Nick Singleton's workout look like during COVID when he was training in his garage? If I recall correctly, I think I heard you say he didn't have a squat rack 
What did you have him he do to replace cleans, back squats? His best was power cleaning 330, or he, he cleaned it in the hole, and then he hit it for a top set of five front squats. So you were clean and then plus and five front squats. squats. And he would do that on What did he do for jerks and like benching too? He would do, so for, we, with jerks, he couldn't do it. He could snatch, uh, but I wouldn't have him do any jerks. And then we would do floor bench and dumbbell floor bench all the time. And so, he had, he had dips. He had like a power tower and he'd just bang out dips like all day. So no full range of motion bench because he didn't have a bench. Right. Like he didn't have a bench. He had to use dips. Okay. Yeah. Dips and floor press. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lots of floor press. And he had hundreds, so he was doing heavy. And and uh, Sean would spot him, his little brother. Okay. And then another one from Reddit. Zealous Ideal Day 672. There's hyphens in there, too. Should a basketball athlete lift before or after a lifting session? A lifting session or a... Oh, it says lifting session because I, I remember uh, talking to um to mon about this too uh but i think he means should a basketball athlete lift before or after a training session it does say lifting i mean if you're gonna lift before i would only do 20 minutes if you would lift after i'd do 40 if you're like in season and just i would i would wait a little bit after yeah i guess you need more context around like yo what's your goal with yeah this? and where you're How at you trying I, to do I, it? I would say if you're in the off season i would you know go play basketball and then lift afterwards and get a good good workout in him I guess our freak of the week will have to go to next week because it's in there. Should I say who it is? C word. It's C word. We'll just have to show the video next week. Okay, I'm going to go coach. Until next time. Peace. Later.